Say that again, what's your, what's your problem on Stone? I'm not explosive with it. Right, but let's see what's going on then. So I get here and I've been working on it recently, but typically I'm just... Yeah. Probably like that, but I really need to work on Yeah, that's nice. Very good. Really cool. Yeah. So, can anybody see anything that they imprint? Like, bearing in mind, he he says his problems the explosiveness and driving the power driving up. Can anybody see anything that they that they could potentially improve? He said it's quite high up. Pardon? When he's supposed to be at the hole, his arse is quite high. Right. Instead of being low, then where you can get many of right through. Okay. Yeah. High up, so there's not much room to get. Sense. Yeah. So he's starting with his hip hip high, and you see some people starting with hips lower. Yeah. So yeah, th this is something again very individual and uh, something to explore. Um, you find find that genuinely dependent. You might have some people who were really explosive with the hips. People who are strong at dead, really strong at deadlifting. They might be strong at power cleans. They may struggle with squats. Um, those kind of p is, is that describing anybody? Like in terms of ratio, so you so forget like it doesn't matter what your numbers are necessarily. If that describes you, you may be you may have more success with a slightly higher hip as the bottom position than somebody who has anybody got a squat that's nearly as big as the deadlift. Yeah, so you might you might find that going there uh, like say hips low may maybe uh, you know if you're going for like max stone you might you might find that 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 is helpful. Does that, everybody understand why without explaining? Yeah. No. Yeah. So so ba so basically you um, you so say, taking somebody who's strengths a deadlift or uh, rather than the the anterior chain, like leg strength if you will, like they might find that in this position here they you the the not really using the quads as much and they're using more hip power hip extension, yeah. Whereas somebody who's got really, really strong, really strong legs, like in this position, they're not necessarily using them that well. Whereas they might find that coming to here, they use it, they're putting the using the quads a bit more by putting them on stretch. Yeah. So e either way, what I would say, regardless of, so you you individually need to explore and find out your your best position, whether hips low, hips high, whatever, somewhere in the middle. Uh, but but definitely a, con a a thing that remains constant that you that you can improve is actually spending less time at the bottom position. Yeah. So you're doing like say call that a squat at the bottom of the drive. You're doing a pause squat. Yeah. Yeah. So you just make you're just doing more work than you need to. Yeah. You're doing a powerlifting comp. You wouldn't do a pause squat if you could, would you? Um, so I was watching the eighties with the Max Stone. They had. They're all just straight back. Lap and then straight up. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm not carrying over the explosive power. Let, let's see see what happens if you if like if you if you go straight straight into it. So as soon as you lap it, bounce out the bottom. Good. That was better. Do another rep. That was better again, yeah. Good stuff. Have a little rest. So the so the first one there, did it feel like you were coming forward a little bit as you drove up? Yeah. So what what's the problem there? To forward on my toes. It's not really a problem. It's just skill. It's just the fact that I've thrown a cue at you that you haven't practiced it. So you just pra keeping it, like trying to. I know I'm going in depth here, but like trying to keep things as simple as possible. You just need to practice that thing. Like one thing to take away from this, if that's your genuine thing, genuine thing you need to improve, is. Spend, spend less time at the bottom position and work out how you can do that. Yeah? yeah. And that's gonna that's gonna help you massively. And then refining that in terms of like say trying to use the stretch reflex and you know almost like loading up a spring and bouncing out the bottom, like over time, like that that's gonna be a lot more efficient. Like always try and explain these things in terms of how you're gonna produce the same force but gonna have a more of an more of an effect. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and, in, and undoubtedly you're going to be able to do that by bouncing out of the hole. We cue you to do it now and it feels weird just because it's, it's different. Yeah. Because you, yeah, exactly. So don't like, I see people get put off by trying new things like this. Sorry, just trying new cues, especially when they're like relatively successful at stuff anyway. Like you're good at stones, do you know what I mean? So why would you kind of 
almost like be a novice again and then build like it can be quite hard for the ego sometimes yeah so actually just just thinking no um is okay to feel a bit dodgy and just 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 go for it so um i think the thing that what what you kind of need to improve here is I, i see people who struggle with this by they almost feel like they lap it and then they then you lap and then readjust your hands and that's the limiting factor why you can't bounce out of the hole does that make sense yeah so and again this is a thing that you're only gonna learn through skill and that's why the six six is brilliant for you today because you can do quite a few reps here and you can try these little things where if, if we're doing it with a hundred like it's a bit more tiring yeah um so just try try this time and then bit basically as you try, try and time it so as you as you're going down and the stone's weightless you ca- you, you, you you move your hands rather than feeling like it settles somewhere What's that then? yeah exactly rather than lapping and then feeling oh it's safe let's move the hands then drive up because that's causing the pause isn't it yeah yeah so as you're lapping as you're maneuvering under it basically you want to you want to time it so at the point where the stone's neither going up nor down and that's the point where you yeah exactly and let's let's see if you can time it all together maneuver in the hands and then bounce out of the hole that's really good mate yeah do another good stuff brilliant so advantages of real advantages of this when you get really well drilled can people see the subtle difference in that yeah um so another advantage of doing this is actually in terms of efficiency you're getting a little rest yeah even even when when the stones are heavy you're actually getting a little rest on that transition because when it's weightless you're actually not producing significant tension you're actually just maneuvering your body around that whereas you do you lapping it you're holding the full weight and then you're maneuvering your hands around it and you, you're feeling the weight all the way through. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? So you're actually, you, you can actually, when you're rearranging, if you get really good and really well skilled and oiled at it, like you can actually have like, it's a little bit of a rest and also reset your breath at that position. Yeah? yeah. And reset, if you can, any of your positions within the sport, if you can reset your breath, when you fit extension or at the point of weightlessness on the individual object, that's, I think that's what we should be aiming for. Do you want to take your breath when you're not being manipulated by an object? Does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah? So if you can take, rather than, you know, you're buried in the hole here, and then you're moving your arms around, and then you're trying to, like, just fit right in that position the quality of breath you can get there is compared to being fully extended going back to joint stacked yeah joint stacked breathing yeah so just have, just have one more brilliant mate yeah good so I suppose it's that confidence of actually what he's doing there is actually is letting go with the arms rather than feeling like you need to grip the stone all the way through to get it on the lap. Like he's actually, his positioning's good. So he actually just lets go with the hands and the stone just stays in position, yeah? Really good. Let, let's talk a little bit about timing to optimize this, pow- this power. So it looks like, it doesn't, it, it wants, it looks like you kind of, pulling up with the arms a little bit at the same time as, you, as your legs. Like, if anything, what we want to do, with, the, in my opinion, what we should be doing with the arms is keep it, keeping them chill, like squeezing on the stone to create tension to keep it close to your body, but not pulling up, not, we're not pulling up on it, yeah? yeah? If we want to get, if we're loading to height, you, you, the pull up with the arms wants to be the definitely the last thing in the chain it looks like you're up you kind of all doing it at one up at the minute so this time what i want you to imagine is you're doing you're doing it like two it's almost like two movements right it's you're extending with the legs there's a little gap and then you're going like this so it's like a pop 
So it's like a one, two, yeah? Whereas at the minute you're like that as one, yeah? Very good. That was good. It actually looks like you're getting it actually looks like you're getting better extension and height. Now you're now you're not actually trying to pull it up high. It feels a lot better. Yeah? So you you're just using your lower body more efficiently. Very good. That's it. So again, going back to the principles of what I'm saying, like what I was saying about yoke, like look at the upper body as just like a connector really. It's like the icing on the cake. Yeah? A lot of people are thinking, right, I'm loading to this height. I need to pull it up with the arms, yeah? You're gonna limit yourself and make it feel really, really difficult. Whereas you actually just think about relaxing the arms, hitting that good position, and then after you've driven up explosively, then maybe pull in a little bit if you need to, and then push. You're gonna be onto the next dome more efficiently. Yeah. Definitely. Um, have we got any, got any other questions or any other points? Does everybody understand that? Right, so. What do you think, Cal? What's your... You're a stone man. What would your... How do you... Do you go high hip or low hip? Like, if you're going heavy? I wouldn't have it up here, but slightly higher hip. Slightly higher hip, yeah. Much more of a posterior Yeah. Cool. And, like, if you were doing, like, say... Let's say a moderate run. Say, like, say, 90, 110, 130, 150 or something and a 170 on the end, like what would your uh, strategy be in terms of technique and where would so you choose? One motion, the latest one's up until yeah. the point where it's like I need the lap in order and then lap and motion therefore. Yeah, fantastic. So, cool. Does that, would anybody use more than two techniques? More than two techniques. So he's described the one motion and then the lap and load, or the like the high hip lap and load when they get heavy. Or you said like the one motion and then the high hip lap and load. Yeah. Would anybody did anybody do any different to that? Or just stick with stick with one. So like if I, if I was doing like. Like I, I sometimes, like I'd maybe opt for, for me personally and playing to my strengths. Like I'd be doing the heavy, would be starting off light stone one motion, and then the heavy stone I'd be going to my strongest position. So like the probably a lap and load. Like can you just hold, hold that set? So probably a lap and load. Actually, this is an, another little thing that's important about using the stretch reflex. If I'm going for max stone. I still want to go for uh, manipulate the stretch reflex, but I'll go. I'll pick it up, lap, and then what I might do, right, right there, because I'm having to rearrange my hands, it feels so heavy. I might go down, and then I might come up again with my hip ever so slightly, and then descend again. So I'm coming up, so I'm in like a, a rack position that feels like not too, like feel, actually feels relatively comfortable with like max stone. But then I. I don't want to pause quite, so I'll come like halfway up, boom, boom, and then bounce and go again. So that, that's another little tip if it's really, really heavy. If, 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 you're, if you get to the point where you lap a stone and you feel like, well, in it, this is, I don't know if I'm going to load it, like, if that's your scenario. So that, that's, a, that's a little thing to, to play with. Um, but in terms of, if I was going for that as my end stone, and then, like, say, one motion's at the start for the first one or two, like in the middle, like I'd be going for this end one for like the low, low hip, because that's like where I feel strongest or where I've loaded load the heavy stone. But if I go for that one on the moderate stones, like even the one if I, like you would do where you go straight down into the hole and up, like if I do that on the moderate stones, like I'm actually a lot quicker if I do a high hip position. So the moderate stones might just go here, three, that, bang. My, my hip starts higher, higher yeah. than my knee. Yeah. So again, just another point at how your technique, like having more things in the locker, is useful because it might be you might be able to apply it to different contexts and stuff. Yeah. Um, so what about what about one motions? Have people had a go at one motions? Do, does anybody have a feel of that? By the way, it's sixty. 
Um, if that's you can have a go with the stones, or if you or you, alternatively, can we just grab this one? You can use that instead of the stone. It's like 25 kilos. If you want to just practice the technique. So I'm trying to. You're almost going backwards to go forwards. You're going down to actually finish the. Yeah. Assuming I can clap it in the first place. That's it, that's there. good. Yeah. And then you're like coming up. Is that what you mean? So so what? Imagine that's really, really heavy and you were you were trying to go um trying to bounce out the hole. Yeah. yeah. If you missed it on the first one for instance, like if you didn't go oh, straight. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah, do, do, just work work it out so you've got to Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. So can, it, can anyone see an error here? It's creeping in. High hips. No, it's not, that's not an error. That could be optimal. Did you, did you notice anything? Right, okay. Right, well, we'll, let, let, oh, we'll cover that in a second. I've got another, because I'd... Go on then, do another. I was doing, I was like... See, I, I like to think about like the extension as well when I get to the top of a sandbag yeah. or a stone. So you, you start to sit down as soon as it's past your knees. Yeah. So then the stone's sitting on top of your knees, so it's far, further away from your torso. Right. So try and think about standing all, a little bit high, stand up a little bit more. So when you get past your knees, go a little bit further, then sit down. Nice. So look at a little bit closer. Yeah, that's closer. a stronger like shelf. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Nice. Do, do one of those, but do but extend with it. Nice. Feels good. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that that actually like fixed the thing that I was gonna that I was gonna point to actually. So what what it was. Um, on the load, it was um, the first couple. It was like spinning and dropping and like sliding down. Yeah. yeah. But because what you 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 got it into a better better position in the lap like that that fixed that. I like that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's go again. Just go straight straight into um, extend up. Just to hit. Yeah. Just do a do a rep getting it as high as possible. Cool. So, go on. Get that ankle extension. Yeah. So you're going to get more power if you if if you extend up onto the toes. Yeah. Okay. yeah? Like like say push press. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that's going to be a uh, real good efficiency thing. Thing that I'd be interested to see if we went heavy. We're not going to. If it, the thing that you were doing before before cow's cue was like as you were driving up looked like it was sliding yeah. down a little bit which was fixed a lot by the by changing the position yeah. here same as when you get relatively heavy with a log and it just starts to slip yeah i think that happens to me more i tend to if a heavy log i tend to struggle with a clean and less so much the overhead yeah yeah well we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. and this will transfer <laughs> over to so what i think for you assuming that you're not going to wear a belt and this is my, this is my theory people might disagree with this Pardon? Do you wear belts for stones? Yeah. Oh, I, I do, I wear about eight. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I do wear a belt, to be honest, but... Um, you don't think it just gets in the way? No, it's worth the trade-off for me for okay. producing more force. Um, but, I, but I think, forget that, like assuming that you're gonna, you're gonna lift like that, uh -huh. yeah? I think, um, for somebody like you, lean, but I would say that you want to um, keep the stone attached to the to the lowest position possible. Really? I think so. Yeah, okay. that's the thing that I've changed my mind. Mind. I used to teach people up here on yeah. top of the belt, but I but I I've yeah I, I feel like it's much better now for for smaller guys. Can you show, show me what you mean? Um, I can get you to demonstrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
But the, but basically, right, what, what you do mm -hmm. is try and squeeze it into your sternum. Right. Or like try, try, and hold, try and hold it high as you drive up. So I'm here? Yeah, like you normally would maybe, yeah? Hold it there. Yeah, and try, like ignore what I've just said. Right, right. hold it into so where you'd normally do, like hold it into your sternum. That's good, yeah? No, that's pretty good. So, what I saw before, I saw it slipping down, which yeah. may just be fixed by, by, by Kyle's thing. But I suspect as that weight goes up, you're gonna, like, if you get to a, a heavy stone, yeah. I think you're good, like, it wouldn't surprise me if that would start to slip down mm -hmm. as you drove down. Okay. Could you imagine that or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas, if you start lower, or if you start the, like, and you stabilize into your hip, yeah. there's no way it can slide, it's got nowhere to Not slide to. to. Um, and also the, ad the other added benefit of this method would be it's going back to what we were saying about the low bar yoke before. It's like if you, tr you, you, if you squeeze a weight into your hip versus a squeeze a weight into here, producing the same force, you're gonna be able to move a bigger weight in here than up here. You know, like, like comparing a front squat to a zercher squat kind of thing. Yeah. Would anyone disagree with that? No. So, yeah, I, I, I just found, found that over time, I actually just, instead of trying to fix the slide, actually just, put, just putting it to its like lowest point or where it wants to be. Yeah. Um, and then by chance, I've realized that actually any weight feels a lot easier to stand up. It feels a lot easier to stand, significantly easier to stand up with lo, uh, lo, lower down. Um, and again, like I've st te teach this to some some uh, clients and stuff, but then there's other people who stuck with the method that I taught them years ago. Like uh, Tim, who did the record, he wanted to do 173 at 80, and he's using that technique there because. But his brother, his twin brother, is using the lower lower hip technique. They're both they're, they're both really good, but it's just. So my point is, you can you can be successful at both. But I'm saying if this error creeps in for you, yeah, okay. you know where you feel like, oh, I'm getting to the point where the weight feels all right, but then it's just slipping. Yeah. I'm saying that could be a fix for it. Okay. Like if you start with it lower down and focus on squeezing into your hip, it's not gonna slide, okay. yeah? Um, people, people said to me when I started doing it like that, people were like, oh, well, you're sacrificing height. Um, but, you, but you're not because the trade-off is you can produce, you can get it going, you can, for, like, like yeah, you demonstrated before, like actually produce, if, you, if you're explosive from there, it just rolls all the way up anyway. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter so much where it starts if you extend properly. Um, so, okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody else want to have a, have a go? Oh. Solid. <laughs> nice. What it what it looks like is you drive up. So what, what I like about what he's doing there is maximizes his height by extending up onto his toes. Yeah? Looks really good, really explosive. But it looks like you get there and you're in a rush to get down. Like you don't want to spend much time there, yeah? Which indicates that it's not perfectly balanced. It looks like you're almost like stopping yourself falling forward so you went back down again. Does that make sense? So what I would do with, as a drill would be when you're doing lighter or warm up to make sure that all that force that you're producing is in the most efficient line, just do some pauses on your tiptoes before you drop because if you're, do, you're doing pause in that position, it's showing that your line's right, yeah? Just have a, have a little go at this. You might find this difficult, you might fall, but this would be a way that's just gonna Make your line more efficient, mate. No, you're not on your tiptoes. So pausing up here, yeah? Pretty good. So, you, so yeah, that, so, so it's showing that as you drive up, you fought, you're fighting against falling back, yeah? So, um, so yeah, that, you practice that. That's going to... You, you practice that for a few sets as you warm up or whatever next next session it's just gonna any given weight it's just gonna feel more efficient if you make so doing that yeah um what's the what was the other thing that we're gonna do so what one motions like how, how would you teach one motions 
try and get chest close to the to the stone and try and get where the front portion is more like a road getting an extra yeah. body and then just going through really aggressive triple extensions. Cool. So has anybody done uh, has anybody what have a go at one motion who hasn't tried it before? Do you have a go? You have? Are you done? Yeah? Oh, go on, let's have you in. And Cal, can you coach? <laughs> go on, you, you... It's not my workshop. No, come on, come on, I'm interested, come on. Come on, and then, and then I'll, I'll chip in with my angle. Say the cue so we can hear everyone here. <laughs> so I just want him to get his feet more in line with the center of the stone, yep. so a wee bit closer, because he's just setting up a wee bit more. Cool. Have a little rest. That very good. Very good. So I find that a lot of people. Have you guys done one motion so far? No. Um, so I find that. Do you have a Do you have a go with this sandbag? Either any of you. Do you coach many women? Yeah. Do they complain about boobs getting in the way? Well, yeah, oh, what a brilliant question this is, yeah? <laughs> this yeah. Is, this is what I'll pay 50 quid for. Right, okay, so... So, 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 so th th this will be fixed by exactly what I'm said to you? Yeah. Catch it here rather than... Yeah, yeah. That, that's the fix. So catch it where? Sorry, because I... Yeah. So, so you're dri dri driving up, can I, can I poke you in there? Right, right. Yep. you go like that, yep. right, and the stone's going in there rather than there. Right. So you just got, you just got the, all the force is going there, so it rolls up, yeah. and then it just rolls over your boobs, right. rather than being pressed in. Okay, but sometimes I like, get stuck. <laughs> I get stuck there. Like under it. Yeah, because yeah, I've always tried to get it like yeah. here, We're really yeah. so that it everything's out of the way, especially if yeah. the person's quite a bit I mean, it's bigger. Hard to, I think it's hard yeah. to show with a yeah, I mean, but, yeah, it is hard. Brilliant, it's brilliant it's questions, brilliant questions. So, so... Got, got a couple of questions there, right? So the, the thing what I'm saying about the squeezing it in low, right? If you're working with a bigger person or so, somebody, somebody who's carrying more mass here or like say, Cal, Cal you, you're competing against the big opens guys, their lowest position might actually be on the sternum. So you, you see a lot of these, get, like a lot of guys at like say Giants Live for instance and watch them load stones, brilliant. But, and they don't even necessarily know why. Because they've, they've, like, they've, they've lapped it and they're just squeezing it in. And it's in this like, kind of beautiful position on top of a shelf. Yeah? Whereas sometimes with like, light, lighter or, or leaner people, if they, if they try and mimic that technique, then this error creeps in where it's sliding. So, so I think the pulling it into the hip thing is really a really, really good thing for smaller people to practice. Maybe, maybe, maybe women as well. Um, has anybody ever felt like they've hurt the sternum on stones? Right, yeah, because that, that, that's, that, that's a thing that in my opinion it comes from trying, trying holding it too high. Yeah? You squeeze it into your abs or your hips, like that's just going to be like a game changer for you, honestly. Um, and yeah, and for, for, the, for, for, the, for the ladies in general, like drive, driving up from here, and trying to get, gain as much momentum as you can so it goes through this point. Yeah, the, like you've, you've got something that you're working against here, but produce, produce more power here. Um, it's just the same principle as, as, as guys doing a, heavy, doing a heavy stone that they're only strong enough to get to here. Like, yeah, you are working against something, but the principle would be, be as efficient as possible from the position that you're driving up from. Um, yeah, and, and I do think that you're going to have more success practicing from, from lower. And if you've got, if you're training a big, bigger person, then their lo lowest comfortable position it might, like, might, might be here. The, they've, they've got mass there. They can't, they can't get it down. Here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that can be difficult. They might have problems like, like actually lapping it. Well, if they can get it up to here, they're brilliant at loading it. They might actually find it's just, just really awkward in general. Um, but, but yeah, ladies, I would say, say 
specifically go go down down here um yeah that that's a bit like obviously you, you know you know shannon that's something that she's changed in her her stone runs and um re really good like she was at she was at the point where she was like she was good don't get me wrong but like she was like missing like loading to moderate height and then missing the missing the lip so it was like sliding down a little bit and then we just just completely changed the technique and got it to go for the low hip now she's like extending a lot like a lot better she's really strong um but yeah and, and having more success going from the, from that lower hip position and, and loads of loads of ladies that have trained that have like either come come like had un, 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 discomfort with the the boobs and and or the crushing sternum and that that does does significantly help in general but in terms of to go let's just have a go do you understand what i mean by one motion yeah, yeah. just just have a go so bit so, so let, let, let's go back to basics right what what i think is really good you know if, if you're coaching somebody that you'll often find that say like we're I, I often find that, that people struggle getting their head around one motion. They might be really good at lap and load, and then you might say, right, let's go and load one motions, and they, they struggle to get the, the technical aspect. And then I've realised that more recently, I've just dumbed it back down to... I, remember, I don't know if you remember when you first lifted stones or first started in the gym and just gave it a go without any guidance, if anybody did that. And mo most people actually just do that, one motion. They pick a stone that's light enough to do it with, and they'll just go, oh yeah, put, put that stone up to there. And they'll just literally go, put it onto there. And then we say, right, let's get a heavier stone. And you almost, and then you teach them to, oh, the stone's a bit heavier now. Now lift it to your lap and then, so you actually learn that first subconsciously and then go to the lap and load. So what I'm saying is just go, just go back to that. Just think like, like keeping it as simple as possible, get the, the around the equator around the the midpoint and i'll try and align that with midfoot get a good grip and then just stand up yeah that's brilliant yeah perfect so without with, without getting too technical that that is perfect yeah so yeah that that's just a simple way of doing it just get make sure you make sure you grip the good thing because that's going to be the that, that that's the limiting fa why, why does why, why would you change to lap and load like during a run strong. yeah if it feels strong then you probably reach that point where you could probably i don't know what's your what's your pb that you've done one motion or whatever so say you did one four say you did one four one forty five you could probably do it but you'd probably at the point where your lap and load would be quicker yeah yeah yeah, you, so obviously the, the whole point of learning your one motion is that you're getting that speed thing. So sometimes you'll get to a point where you're over that threshold that it's actually slower than just lapping and loading it really fast, yeah? So, so yeah, what the, and the reason, the, the, the reason why, why, it's, why it's slower is because what, what are you doing when, you, when, you, when you're lapping it? What, what are you doing with your hands? To what? A, to a stronger position to grip the stone, yeah. yeah? So that, so that, that's the thing is you, you get to the point you, what, with the one motion, your arms aren't in a great position to maximise your grip. So, um, so yeah, so that that's going to be the limiting factor is that you you either get to the point where you can't grip it anymore in a one motion. You you see some people they'll they'll try it and then it will almost slip and then they'll be forced into a lap and load. Or the fact is they're having to use so much energy to keep a grip of it that it's, it's slowing the whole thing down because it, they're in an inefficient position to grip. So therefore, the most important thing is making sure, if you're going to do one motion, and making sure that, you, that your hand position is as close to perfect as possible to maximise the, the grip, yeah? because you're going to have less of a margin for error. If your hands are slightly rock, slightly forward and you lap and load it, you can maybe kind of grind it up to your hip and then it doesn't matter. Whereas you go and try and one motion with it, you're not going to be able to do it, yeah? So a good little, good little rule of thumb, like I, I ache around the equator of the stone or like around the widest bit. Like if you're 
body allows it midfoot ideally yeah roughly if you're bigger like you see a lot of the like the opens guys like the they physically can't get into that position so that's where the the pickup's going to be compromised so they might have to come a little bit further away from midfoot yeah but if you can like find, find midfoot on that and uh, midfoot and then around the equator of the stone and then that's going to be the position that you your grips maximized yeah um, any more questions on screws? Just quickly, would you change your hand position, see about Say change? say that again, sorry. So like the proper high platforms, would you change hand position so it was more coming across you as opposed to coming straight up? Like almost like a shoulder technique for a proper high platform, like yeah. thumbs obviously like there on me. Yeah, yeah, well well it, again it it depends on the individual. Um I would I've never ever, I've never loaded to a platform where I've needed to shoulder it first. Um, I've done it week one in a training block where if if I did the competition that weekend, the only way I'd be able to do it would be to shoulder it. But I do feel like if you optimise your technique, usually even at Giants Live, like what's the first oh hundred? Is it? Yeah. Is it ever one twenty? Is it hundred? Yeah. Right, but but let's let's say a hundred, like. Let's say 100, they're doing the 100 to 180 run, and that's to like 67 inches. Like, like I think mo most of us would be like, it might be a little bit, yeah, it might be a little bit short. It might come into play, but but realistically, like say, mo most of us would be able to load like 90, 100, 110 to 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 that that kind of height. What do you think? Like like lo loading to, loading to height. Is there has there ever been a have you done a, have you ever done a comp where you've had to shoulder it first or? No, I never had to shoulder it. No, um, just um, extend them all the way until it's at the very tip top position, and then trying yeah. to like, you're trying to like explode out, and then you're trying to get that quick transition of hands under. So well, that's really neat too. You can kind of yeah. you can assist it up with your hands to pack. It's not like a yeah. full on like strict press, but you're. Like yeah, remember that, that, that one? What was that one at Hulls? One point seven. Yeah, and that was a hundred, wasn't it? A hundred, my first one. And like, I won motion that. Aye. Like, and if if it was much higher, I wouldn't have had the. If it was like really, really testing in terms of height, I'd lap and load it, move my feet in. Aye. But even at one point seven, you're not going to get you're not going to get any higher than that, and you're not going to. You're not going to get significantly higher than that. And you're not going to get significantly heavier on a first stone than a hundred, really. Um, but yeah, like you, you'll be able to. Do it. But 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 that's the thing. A lot of people don't don't put the. A lot of people take. You see, a lot of people who struggle over like 50, 54 inches, don't they? That like like in terms of technique because they're not extending properly. Like you see people actually choosing to go to shoulder and try and pop it up, right. but they haven't even hit this position that Cal's just described, yeah? So, a lot of you may, may not have even been there with a the stone, but just imagine, right? Everybody's cleaned a log, haven't you? Yeah? And just think how, how that, that feels in that position, because you have to be there because you're in this position to, that you're gonna press it or whatever. You, you, you've already developed that position, so you, ju you just need to, before you go to shoulder it and try and pop it up, visit that position and practice that position with the stone, yeah? But unless you practice it with light weights, with the error that people will do is they'll kind of go up here and then they won't hit that position. They'll go to here and it's just out in front. It needs to achieve this position because then it's mid foot, yeah? And then it feels a lot lighter than whatever it is. Whereas you'll see people get to about here, bottle it, try and press it up and it feels horrendous because the weight is so, the go on, I'll just demonstrate one actually. Right, look at look at the right? So people people will go to like here and try and get underneath it. So if you if you watch that from the side, like the reason why that feels so horrendous because the, the centre of mass of that is Miles out in front, where does it go? See, I didn't even do it right then, yeah? Go here. 
with the, the stone as possible, so you're getting that friction, maximizing that friction. Squeeze strength, upper body squeeze strength. It's gonna be gonna be a massive factor. So you, your start position might be like almost like this, or you see some people and they'll use their legs to squeeze in the hands like that. Whereas if you get really, really good, so look look how strong I look in this position here. Or how suited I am to the force there, compared to I get really, really, really confident with tacky. That my tacky's perfect for the day, stone's good, whatever. Um, whereas I, I'll actually do, um, I actually want my, I'll actually get my start position to like as high as, high as possible the more I tr trust my tacky. And I'll be doing the opposite of, to lap it anyway, to, I'll be doing the opposite of squeezing it. I'll be almost like trying to use it, you know, like figure, you know, like your figure of eight, you just attach to the bar, so you don't have to create loads. Of, like, so I'd be, I'd be relying on the tacky to keep these hooks with pieces of string on the end attached to the object. So over time, my start position might get higher. I did, did, a, did a competition here last year. It was like 140 for for reps, like last month's standard, and. Um, and I watched the video and I could feel it. It got easier as I went along. And it got easier as I went along because each rep, each set, I was like, shit, my tacky felt really good there. So I'll start, I'll go here, I'll go here, I'll go here. By the end, by the end of it, I was just going, I was, I, I was like there as in the start position because the tacky felt that good. So it can, can make, make a massive difference. Um, so again, Tacky, how many blends of tacky do you have in your bag? No, I'm not going to tacky with me now. I'm not going to tacky with me now. No, 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 no not, not now, but I mean in your, like, if you're going to come. Well, how many tubs of tacky? Yeah. Just one. Just one. But I'll use that entire tub on the day. Like, that's yeah. useless by the end of the day. So, I, I'll, I'll have like three or four different blends, like, to, and I'll be like, I'll have like three or four different things on, on the back of my hand, like, to test which is most suitable for that day, because, like, couple of degrees here and there can make such a difference and like th this is my belief on tacky in general you know if you see people can you imagine people say missing a stone like this with this like that where their arms are slipping or they'll be loading up and you'll, feel, you'll see it slipping outside of the hand it's like a lot of people say that's uh, squeeze strength maybe like I genuinely believe if you're allowed to use tacky that it's just an equipment error if you see that like if you're if we should be failing so